probably the most important and I wish someone had told me that a lot earlier. Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Today feeling already quite a lot better than yesterday. We just had to take a break because it was too much. Today's video will be still a simple one. A question a lot of people always ask me is what I would do differently or what I would have loved to know before getting into this entire music production thing. As you know, I'm producing music already for 10 years with my first release being like six years away. So I got quite a lot of experience. There are a lot of things I've learned, a lot of misconceptions that I had before starting it. And one thing I can already assure you, it's a lot harder than you might think. I've realized that yesterday again, I love my job. I love making music more than anything else, but it's just like one part of being a music producer. There's also a ton of business stuff, a lot of struggle, a lot of frustration, a lot of financial pressure, as well as pressuring yourself, because you're your own boss, but not too much to actually destroy you. So it's really hard to keep a balance. So what I wish I would know before getting into this entire production thing is actually that it's a lot harder than you might think. It's not only about sitting somewhere, listening to music, making music, producing, learning how to produce, which is already quite tough and can take a couple of years. If you start really early, you might be at a point where you can actually kind of make it as a living and do it full time. But it's very likely that you will end up at a point where everyone else around you, all of your friends are like, I don't know, 25, 26, 28. They're finished with university, have their first jobs making money and you're still living like a student trying to make music, not really accomplishing anything. This can be very, very frustrating. And being frustrated will slow you down even more. So you need to have like a mental strength that is way above average. Like I think I got my strength from my parents. They're both artists, they're both full-time painting and doing sculptures and, and drawings and that is quite tough like it's even harder than music I think and I've got to know that like two self-employed parents from early on so I know the struggle I know what I was expecting I knew what I was getting myself into but it got even way harder than than I ever thought and then the other case some of my friends early on were really successful they, they got destroyed by having absolutely no time. Once you make it in the music industry, everyone will squeeze money out of you. Just take uh, the case with Avicii that had to tour way more than, than he ever probably wanted. There are a lot of other DJs taking breaks, Hardwell stopped touring. So this is really common that you're so stressed, you're playing so many shows. I think also Steve Aoki is playing like 300 plus shows a year, which involves like, I don't know, flying twice a day. It's like... It's insane. So either way, you're kind of screwed. So you really have to make sure that music production, DJing, making electronic music is really what you absolutely love more than anything else. Once you got that check, it's then all about creating your music. When it comes to making music, it takes longer to learn than you might think. It might be harder. You start making music and then you finish your first song and think that's like a huge hit. You will definitely learn really fast that it's just pure shit and you still need to work on it for a couple of years to just get to the point where you make music that is enjoyable for like the normal people out there just listening to music. And then you will reach a point where you try to make everything perfect, which also leads to a lot of problems. It will slow you down. It doesn't really matter to the average listener that you squeeze two more percent out of your songs mixing wise. They just are listening to the song with normal ears or normal speakers. And they just want something that entertains them. Music is an entertainment business, same as making movies, same as performing. You need to entertain the people and if you accomplish that, it doesn't really matter that you're very technical and it's just like perfect. Yes, if you have the time and it's really important for you, make it perfect, perfect for you. But if it's just wasting your time and hinders you from actually releasing music, then maybe just step one step back and make sure you make something that the average person is enjoying. Because at the end, you're not making music for yourself. Yes, this might be part of it 
but you're actually making music to play it out or to let other people listen to it and enjoy it. And if you parallel compress something or not, they won't really care. Which directly leads me to the next point. Don't be too technical and don't bother doing things that are way more advanced than your actual level. Let's say you're starting making music. A lot of people are ask me about very advanced stuff. Then I listen to their music and it just sounds like shit. So first is always the musical side. If you're not musically trained, focus on the musical side. If a song sounds musically nice, the melodies, the chords and everything is, is good, then maybe think about parallel compression, but it shouldn't be the first thing. Also, a lot of people send me songs where I think they're ready for release and they never release them. It's just this, this one step more to actually make it available to everyone. Some are shy, some are afraid of the feedback, but usually if you release your first song, no one really cares. No one will listen to your song and give you feedback. The public won't say like, hey, it's really bad. Just get your songs out there. Just go to your favorite artists, go to Beatport and check when and what kind of music they release when they first start releasing music. It's shit, it just doesn't sound good at all. But from there, they were able to work their way up. If you don't release, you will have it a lot harder. If you wait until you make the perfect song and then start releasing, your music is way better than everything around it. Like your business skills, the people you know, your social media. And this will just um, hinder you from advancing. You will then be frustrated making good music, but nobody listens to it because nobody knows you. So make sure to, to always push on both ends, business side, social media, and your music. If, if both of them are lined up, you can just go ahead. Next up, this took me quite long and I'm still working on it, finding your own style. Like I started producing Progressive House, then Tech House, then Progressive House again, then back to more techno, really underground techno, melodic techno, techno that was more deep house than techno than deep house. Then Deep House with vocals, more Deep House with vocals, quick to future bass, and now it's back to some sort or form of vocal pop influence Deep House. I don't really know what it is. I enjoy making it, but this was like quite a journey. And every time you change your style, it's a step back. You need to learn how to make that new style that you're working on. All of your business contacts are, are kind of gone because when you make deep electronic underground techno Berlin music, and you then start using vocals, all of your gigs that you had in the past, they're gone. Those people won't book you anymore. So find your style early on, stick to it, but also adapt a little. Like if the entire market is moving somewhere, especially in electronic dance music, you have to adapt a little. Keep like your own style to 60, 80% and adapt to 20 to 40 to whatever is going on, just to stay modern, relevant. It's kind of showing like, hey, I understand this business, this scene. I know to be trendy and just, just go with, with the flow a little at least. Then the next point is actually stop watching tutorial videos or maybe dial it down a bit. Let's say you want to know how to sidechain, then just search for a video that explains sidechaining. Look what the guy is doing, try to replicate it and then just try to e experiment a little more than that. Just to really understand what sidechaining is. But you don't need to watch like 20 videos explaining the same thing. A lot of tutorials teach you nonsense. A lot of stuff is like just repeated, repeated and repeated. Or you learn something that is only really working in that very scenario. Music production is really all about experience. And to gain experience, you just have to be active and do your own stuff. So if you want to EQ something, learn how an EQ works and then just EQ a ton. Just take tracks, EQ them. Go into your DAW and EQ, 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 and gain that experience and learn how to EQ what. You don't really need to understand what a button is doing. You just need to learn what it sounds like if you turn it left or right. What does it do to the sound? That is the most important. The technical things behind it, yes, good to know, but it's not important to make good music. And the last one for today, probably the most important, and I wish someone had told me that a lot earlier, or I actually, I mean, it's so common sense, you know it, but it's so hard to learn the techniques to actually do it, and that is finishing your songs. Think about this, every single song you start and not finish 
is wasted time. Yes, you learn something along the way, but if you would just finish that, you could release it, you could make money, you could get in touch with other people that listen to it, you can just build up a fan base slowly but steady. Every single song you don't release, you don't finish, is a missed opportunity. At the beginning, I'd say in the first year, first two years, yes, you do a ton of tracks, you start one, you don't like it, you start the next one, but after like two years, you should start aiming for songs that you finish and that are releasable, that people can listen to. No one will listen to an eight bar loop and give you feedback. No one will release that. Just make sure it's finished. Like for a pop song, three minutes something, for a techno club, whatever song, five minutes, 50 plus. And this way you will also learn to arrange. I think in most songs that I listen to, the arrangement is usually the weakest because people just don't understand that listening to music, again, is entertainment, but it's an entertainment that takes time. It's not like a photo, a picture, you just look at it. It just takes time and it needs to be interesting like a movie over time. It needs to have a start end, and like a peak and in between maybe some twists. So it's really important entertain your listener from start to finish. With that being said, that's already it for today. I'm still in my recovery phase. Give me maybe one more day to be fully back to daily vlogging about my life as a DJ and producer and showing you every bit that I do. Let me know what you think about these tips and also let me know what you wished you would have known like five years ago or the day you started making music. Just share it with the community. I think this helps everyone. <laughs> I should trust you